Well, hello to the Network Marketing Pro community. My name is Eric Worre, and today we're gonna explore something different. We're gonna talk about the seven deadly sins in network marketing. Now, why would I wanna talk about this? Here's why. If you're gonna be around this profession for a while, wouldn't it be helpful to know some of the things to avoid? Wouldn't it be helpful, if you're gonna have a long career here, to understand the things that will absolutely rip an organization apart, will take your efforts and diminish those efforts? Wouldn't it be important to know that? And maybe if you're um, at engaging in one or more of these activities now and you don't even realize that they are deadly to your long-term success, wouldn't it be helpful to know? Yeah, I've, I've been involved in the network marketing profession since 1988, a long time. I've engaged in almost all of these seven deadly sins. So I know from experience that if you're around long enough, <clears throat> you're gonna have the temptation. Sometimes it's with because of ambition, sometimes it's just because of lack of knowledge. But after watching this video today, you won't have the lack of knowledge anymore. You'll at least know the things that over time will have a negative impact on your business. I want you to become network marketing professionals. I want you to go to the top. I want you to have a smooth career. I want you to build something and have it last for a long time. So let's talk about deadly sin number one. Deadly sin number one is overinflating your product or your opportunity. We've talked about this before, this idea of hyping up the product is magical cures and using language that you shouldn't use when it comes to what your product can do or, or cannot do. Making sure that you're in alignment with what your company says that you can claim when it comes to your product. When you overinflate it in order to get a customer or to, in order to sign up a distributor and you know you're overinflating it, it eats at you and it also affects your credibility. Now, when it comes to the opportunity, it's very subtle how this happens. Usually it starts with kind of exaggerating your income. You take your best month and you tell everybody that's what you're making all the time. Maybe you, you only made that one month because of a special bonus or something. You lie about your income or somebody else maybe tells a friend in front of you, they tell a friend about how much you're making and it's more than what you're making and you don't correct them. And when you don't correct them, all of a sudden now you find, you find yourself painted into this box where you are living a false reality and you're promoting a false reality. Maybe you've qualified at one rank one month, but then you drop down a couple ranks, which is normal. It happens all the time. Nothing to be ashamed of. But you're telling the world that because you qualified that one month at that rank, that you are kind of earning more than you're actually really earning. Just understand this. Inside of network marketing, the truth is enough. There's no need to exaggerate your success. There's no need to exaggerate the quickness of success of other people in the organization. There's no need to exaggerate or take one person that had magi magical success and make them the entire story for the, of the whole company. The truth is enough when it comes to the, the financial opportunity. The truth is enough when it comes to your products. When you engage in overinflation and exaggeration, it has an impact on your organization. And people start saying, man, everybody's saying this, but I know it's not true. Everybody's claiming that, but I know it's not true. This person's saying they're making this amount of money, but they know it's not true. And once they have that knowledge, that, that um, untruth, lies are being allowed within the culture, it starts to erode their self-esteem. The truth is enough, it's okay, okay? So deadly sin number one is overinflating product or opportunity. Deadly sin number two, and I struggled with this one my entire career in network marketing. When I built in the field, I'm retired permanently now, doing what I'm doing with you now. But when I built as a distributor in the field, and the biggest thing that I see, whether you're a brand new or you're a, a, a more established leader is inconsistency. Hot and cold, hot and cold. You get all excited, you, you go to a conference, you get all excited, you come out and you're gonna tear up the world. Two weeks later, you just disappear from your group for a week, two, three weeks. Then you re-engage, hey, we're gonna go after it this weekend. 
and you go after it for three days, and then boom, you're gone for two weeks. So rather than putting in a consistent effort in the hours that you have, you're hot and cold. And what happens when a person is hot and cold is the team starts to lose faith in following their initiative. If you're inconsistent for long enough, you say, hey, everybody, let's go. Let's go tear it up. And no one will follow because they are afraid that if they do and you're not going to be there three days from now, they're going to be unhappy about that decision. So inconsistency. Now, the opposite of all these things is, you know, the, the right path versus the deadly sin. So inconsistency will crush your, the efforts of any builder. Be consistent in the hours that you have. So that's deadly sin number two, inconsistency. Deadly sin number three is negativity. Now, <clears throat> it might be a negative posture. You're kind of mopey. You're kind of, you know, always looking at the negative. You like to gossip. You like to talk about other people. You like to spread these little stories around. Or your company goes through changes and you don't handle it very well. You talk about, well, the company screwed up with this or then my upline screwed up with that. So you talk negatively about other people. You talk negatively about your company if they're going through change, compensation plan, product, something changed and you didn't like it. You tell the world that becomes part of your brand. Negativity becomes part of your brand. People start knowing you as negative person. And I will tell you, a, a leader cannot stay in that negative state and be a leader. You cannot do it. You become somebody that real leaders start to avoid. And that includes your, the people in your organization. They'll start to avoid you. You say, well, no, but I'm right. You know, the company shouldn't have done this. And I'm right, and the company shouldn't have done that. That's fine. It doesn't matter what happens in your organization. What matters is what you do with what happens how you respond to what happens. And you can have a choice of having a negative um, culture, a negative vibe, a negative posture, a negative mindset, or a problem-solving, op opportunistic situation when it comes to your mindset. So you can be negative, you can be positive. That's a choice. Negativity will crush an organization. So that's deadly sin number three. Number four is the idea of the week. A leader gets really excited, they, hear, they, they get this technique and they just go crazy and here's the idea. And they tell everybody in the whole organization, here's what we're going to do. A week later they say, no, that's, now we're not doing that anymore. Now we're going to do this. A week, week goes by, oh, that one's, that one's old now. Now we're going to do this technique. So be very careful at the things that you get excited about and maybe you haven't even tested and that you pour those things into your organization and expect them all to have success. And then you change gears the next week. You change gears the week after that. You change gears the week after that. Whatever the system you have, be very slow to change your system. Very slow to change your daily method of operation. It's really important that you provide some consistency within your organization when it comes to what you're asking them to do on a daily basis. Understand concepts remain the same. Strategies change all the time. Focus on concepts, come up with the, whatever the system is within your organization that works, and be very, very slow to make any changes, even if you had one week's worth of success. Really test things personally and away from the group before you pour it down into the organization and expect them all to follow. The idea of the week will start to erode people's confidence and eventually they're not gonna take action at all. Okay, so that's deadly sin number four. Deadly sin number five, you might not expect me to talk about this, but I'm going to talk about it. Sleeping around within your opportunity, sleeping around within your organization, sleeping around within your company. I've seen it destroy more organizations than you can imagine. Somebody who finds themselves in a situation, whether they are married, in a relationship, not in a relationship, and they find themselves around somebody else that they find attractive, and they decide to take action on that opportunity. And maybe it's somebody in their downline, maybe it's somebody with, within their organization. And eventually that turns into whatever it turns into, but there's dynamic that's, that, that gets stripped into the organization. And then a person, maybe once they do it once, maybe they do it again and again. And pretty soon, especially in leadership, pretty soon everyone in the organization knows Pretty soon, everyone is talking about it. 
and pretty soon everyone is pulling back and stopping taking action, stopping following that leader because of what happened within the organization. Just be aware of the impact that you will have when you do something like that, okay? Or, and again, this is something just to just know about. If there's somebody in your organization that maybe is struggling with this and it's causing challenge within the organization, maybe it's something you can share this video with them. Now, everybody that gets this video shared with you, don't, re don't, don't assume that they're, they're thinking you're, you're uh, naturally in engaged in one of these. Maybe you are. But if, even if you're not, it's important to know that these are the things that will really have an impact long-term in your organization. Number six, deadly sin number six, stealing distributors. And this one, I've, I've, I've had to struggle with this. Not a struggle, I mean, it's not like I was an addict or anything, but here's what would happen. I'd, I'd be having a meeting in some area and some prospect would find their way into my meeting. And they would say, hey, nobody uh, invited me. I just found this meeting. And I'm looking for somebody to sponsor me. You know, can you, can you be my sponsor? You know, I live in this town, you live in this town. And, and instead of saying, no, somebody, somebody uh, uh, encouraged you to, to come to this meeting. You didn't just magically show up. I would rationalize. And I would say, yeah, well, you know, we are local and people do have a choice and all that stuff. And I'd end up signing that person up. Somebody would find out. And I sent that person. And you stole that person. I was like, oh my gosh. Right? Or... So, so, you know, I've, I've seen this happen in many different forms. Form number one is somebody else brings a prospect and that, and that prospect finds, the, you know, finds out that they like you better than they like the person that invited them. And you have a choice whether to sign that person up or not sign that person up. In my opinion, you should never sign that person up. If you didn't bring them to the party, you do not sign them up. Okay? Situation number two is um, somebody within your company Let's say you develop a great relationship with somebody and they say, oh, I hate my upline. They don't give me any support. They don't help at all. And you kind of go, well, maybe you sign up your spouse. Maybe you sign up your, one of your kids. Maybe you sign up somebody else and I'll work with you that way. And you kind of circumvent the rules in order to be able to get that person's effort into your organization. It's devastating in its, in its impact of what will happen within the group because everybody's going to find out. Trust me. Third instance that this happens is you find somebody who's happy in another company and you engage in an effort to make them unhappy about their decision to be involved in that company. My basic rule is, you know, because people make a decision to go from company to company justifiably sometimes. Sometimes it's the right thing to do, okay? But my rule is don't ever take someone who's happy with another company and engage in conversation and effort to make them unhappy with it. Don't plant the seed of doubt in their minds that they're, they're, with, they're with the wrong company at the wrong time. If they come over with you, it's going to be amazing. Okay? That's not what we do inside of this profession. So understanding this, I've had that situation. You know, you see a, a, a leader someplace. Now, if they're wildly unhappy or if they're leaving their company, or if they've left their company, they're in between companies, then fine. But if they're happy where they are, that's the rule. Don't make them unhappy with their situation in an effort to persuade them to come over into your organization. Okay? And the more you do this, the more you're going to be dealing with reputational issues. People will view you as a pirate. They'll view you as a thief. They'll view you as somebody with, who, who lacks integrity. And this is something, again, with my ambition, early, especially early on in my career, with my ambition, I wanted somebody else into my organization and I was prepared to do whatever I needed to do to do that. The whole whatever it takes is a very dangerous road to go down. Some whatever it takes scenarios are not worth it. Okay? So if, if, if to get to the top, you've got to steal from everybody else and you're prepared to do that, I promise you, you're not going to be happy with it. And you're not also not going to be happy with the reputation that you gain as a result of engaging that behavior. So just understand, this is a deadly sin, and it will catch up with you. It will build a reputation for you that will start to repel people within your organization and within your peer group inside of this profession. So that is deadly sin number six. Deadly sin number seven is distributors who bounce from company to company to company. 
They're always looking for the situation where the grass is greener. They're, they have lots of fun within an organization when there's lots of momentum and things are working great, but when it gets to becomes work, when it becomes challenging, when it becomes effort, when it's not easy, when everything's not working magically, they tend to pull up the roots that they had planted and go plant them someplace else because they're addicted to the adrenaline of the startup. I have many friends in the profession that they cannot resist. They literally cannot resist. Um, as soon as it gets hard, they're like, well, this other company over here has some momentum and they, they pick up camp and they move over to that organization. And if you get caught, now understand, um, not everybody joins one company, stays with it for the rest of their career. That's fine. But I'm talking about a serial bouncer, people who bounce from company to company to company to company to company to company. To company. It's going to create problems for you. It just is. I'm sad for the people, my friends, that go from opportunity to opportunity to opportunity because they're literally stealing from their future. They're stealing from their residual income. They're stealing from their reputation. And eventually, a smaller and smaller group will follow you from the next to the next to the next, and you'll find yourself out of the profession, at least for a, a time being, until you're ready to come back in and just sink your teeth in and go to work. Understand this. Every single company in network marketing is going to have problems. Every single company is going to go through a period of time when it doesn't have momentum. Every single company is going to have situations when they go through change, and it's difficult. But moving to another company is not going to change that because the, the other company is going to have it too. It just might be at different times over the course of a career. Decide the, the company and the product line that aligns with you and decide that you're going to go through your problems with them instead of looking for a situation where there are no problems because that does not exist. Okay? So don't be a bouncer. Don't bounce from company to company to company. So let's Let's recap these seven deadly sins. Deadly sin number one, overinflating your product or your opportunity. Deadly sin number two, inconsistency. Make sure that you're consistent. You know, number one, the truth is enough. Number two, consistency is the name of the game. Deadly sin number three is negativity. Decide that you're not going to engage in negative talk, negative posture, negative behavior. You're not going to gossip. You're not going to talk bad about somebody. You're going to be a positive force in the world. Um, so being positive, number three. Deadly sin number four, the idea of the week. Every, every single moment having a new tactic, new strategy. Lock in. Be consistent. Be stable within your organization when it comes to a, a method of operation that you're asking people to do. Deadly sin number five, sleeping around. Just, I, you know, what you do outside of your organization is one thing. What you do inside of your organization is a completely different thing. And just understand this. There are no secrets. Everybody eventually knows everything, especially in network marketing. Word gets around. We're professionals at this. Word gets around. And it's not worth the reputational risk. It's not worth the emotional impact within an organization. It's devastating. Deadly sin number six, stealing distributors. Whether with good intentions or bad, just make a decision that if you didn't bring them to the party, you're not signing them up. And if they're happy with another company, you're, you're not going to make them unhappy with their decision and, and, and the position that they find themselves in. You're going to be an ambassador. You're going to be a friend. You're going to pat them on the back. You're going to send them on their way. You're going to be a peer, but not a predator. And deadly sin number seven, bouncing from company to company. Decide to sink your roots deep. You know, th there may come a time when you have to make a decision, you have to make a move, but don't be that person that every, you know, what I see typically is every couple years, they pull up roots and go someplace. Every couple years, they do it again. Don't be that person because it robs you from your future and it also robs from your reputation. Okay? So those are the seven deadly sins and also some suggestions on what you can do to reverse all of them, build a strong culture, build a great organization, build a great residual future. That's why we do what we do, okay? So if any of these, uh, if you felt emotional when I talked about any of these, if you felt defensive when I talked about any of these, those are for you. This, that, those messages are specifically for you. 
If you think about people, when, 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 uh, when I talk about any of these, if, if any, any of these comes to mind, maybe forward it to them. If there's people who are brand new to the profession, they haven't experienced any of this yet, it's important to understand, here are the landmines within the organization. These are the things to avoid. These are things that all of us together, we can take this profession, take the reputation, take our standards and practices, and improve around the world, because we do have a gift. You know, these are things involved in any business, but we do have a gift. We have something to offer people. It's our job to, number one, show them the opportunity. Number two, warn them against the things that would be potentially a challenge to their future. So, ladies and gentlemen, my wish for all of you, as always, is that you decide to become a network marketing professional, that you decide to go pro. You decide to avoid the seven deadly sins and engage in activities that will build you a true, true future because it is a stone cold fact that we have a better way. Now let's go tell the world, okay? Everybody have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.